Hi everyone, in this video we're going to prove that this set S, together with the binary operation of matrix multiplication, uh, forms a group. So S here is the set of all 2 by 2 matrices of this form. These are diagonal matrices, and you'll notice that the diagonal entries A and B are both in this set. This is the set of real numbers minus 0, so it's all the non-zero real numbers. So A and B are non-zero. And we have to prove um, that this is a group. So before we do that, let's recall the definition of a group. So a group is a set, say G, so a group is a set, G, together with a binary operation star. So together with a binary, I'll just say bin op, star such that and there are three conditions uh, for G to be a group together with the binary operation. The first one is associativity so the binary operation has to be associative. Um, that means if you take A star B and then you start with C this is the same thing as taking A star and then B star C. And this has to be true for all A, B, C in our group G, in our set G, right? It's not a group yet until it satisfies these conditions. Um, the second uh, condition is the existence of something called uh, an identity element. So there exists, I'll call it E in G. That's going to be our identity element, such that for every X in G, uh, we have X star E equals X and um, E star X equals X. Okay, so E is called the identity. And then the third condition, I'll come down here, the third condition is the existence of inverses. So for every X in G, for every X, we can find uh, some Y in G. So there exists a Y in G such that uh, X star Y is equal to the identity and uh, y star x uh, is equal to is equal to the identity. So these are the three conditions. Uh, you'll notice that I never said g had to be uh, non-empty. Well g is non-empty by condition 2. The existence of the identity element uh, guarantees that our set is non-empty. Okay well this set here and this problem is clearly non-empty right? There's infinitely many real numbers a and b so there's infinitely many matrices. For example the matrix with A equals 1 and B equals 1 is in this set. That's the common uh, identity matrix, so the set is non-empty. Okay, so before we do anything, we have to prove that matrix multiplication is indeed a binary operation on this set. In other words, given any two matrices in this set S, the product also has to be in S, right? Because matrices in this set have a special property. They look like this. So proof. So first, let's check that star is a binary operation on S. So let's take two elements of S. So take any two elements uh, in S. Is say A0, 0, 0, B, and say C0, 0, 0, D in S. Okay, then this means that A, B, C, and D are all non-zero, right? Because they're in S. These, these matrices are in S. So A, B, C, D are not equal to zero. Okay, and let's look at the product. Let's go look. Let's look at the product. Let's look at uh, the product of these matrices. So we have A zero, zero B times, and I won't write star. I'll just put it together. The star is implied. C zero, zero D. Using regular matrix multiplication um, to to figure out the first row and first column. You just do A times C plus and then 0 times 0. Just use the first row, first column. So 0 times 0. Just regular matrix multiplication. Uh, this next entry here is in the uh, first row, second column. So we use the first row, second column, and we multiply. We basically take the dot product of those vectors. So it'd be A times 0 plus 0 times D. Just regular matrix multiplication. This is the second row first column, so we use the second row uh, first column. That'll be 0 times C plus B times 0. And the last one, I'll just go quickly, 
be 0 times 0 plus b times d. All right, there's a lot to verify in this video, so feel free to fast forward because um, it's, it's a long, long proof. So this is equal to ac uh, 0, 0, bd. And this is an s, and it's important to say why. This is an s because, because ac is not 0, and that's true since a is not 0 and c is not 0. So that needs to be said, right? So ac is non-zero because the the individual elements are not zero. Likewise, BD is not zero since B is not zero and D is not zero. So there needs to be an and here. And, right, so everything has to be justified in proofs like this, right? You want to justify every single step, uh, leave nothing to, to uh, the imagination, <laughs> right? Show, show all the work. All right, so this shows that star is a binary operation on S, right? We took two matrices in S, and we showed the product was an S. Thus, star is a binary, I'll just say bin op, on S. That, that proves that. Now we just have to go through the conditions. I think the most tedious will be uh, associativity, so we'll do that one first. So now let's go ahead and show associativity. So I'll put a 1 here, and let me switch colors. And I'll just say associativity. So this is what we're showing in this step. So we have to show, uh, let me write it again over here, that for any, let's say for any x, y, z, in G, this is the general um, statement of associativity, uh, x star y star z is equal to x star y star z. It's funny, I just realized something. Up here, when we were talking about the criteria for a group, I used a, b, c for associativity, then I just <laughs> switched to x and y later on. No big deal. Uh, you know, no, no cats were killed. <laughs> so, uh, so that's the uh, associativity criteria. So we need to take three matrices this time. So, so take any. So we need three of these guys. Let's say, let's say uh, yeah, let's use a again. a, 0, 0, B. Then we have C, 0, 0, D. And then we have, uh, let's see, I guess the next letter would be E, 0, 0, F, and S. So we no longer have to go through all of this stuff uh, for this step. We just have to show uh, that this is true, right? Without the operation symbols written, it's X, Y, Z equals X, Y, Z. That's what we have to show, right? That's what we have to show. So the easiest way to do it is just to compute one side, then compute the other side, and then just observe they're equal. So then, let's start with the left-hand side. So let's look at uh, parentheses, parentheses, A, 0, 0, B, parentheses, C, 0, 0, D. I'm going to try to go slow because I do not want to mess up. It's a very uh, long problem. Parentheses, E, 0, 0, F. Okay, so we take the product of these first two, and we already did it up here. So I'm going to go ahead and cheat and uh, show that. By the way, when you're multiplying these, you notice you just multiply the corresponding entries, right? Look, it's AC, BD. That will always work when you're multiplying diagonal matrices. So we can take that shortcut in our work. So this is equal to AC, 0, 0, BD. You can always do that to multiply diagonal matrices. Then we have E, 0, 0, F. And using our little trick, that's ACE, AC times E, right? And then this is in parentheses if we really want to be uh, picky, right? And then 0, 0, and then this is BD, F. And associativity of real numbers says we can drop the parentheses, right? So because, because, um, uh, a, B, C, D, E, F are uh, real numbers. They are, it, uh, multiplication is associative. Is associ I'll just say ASS. So we can drop the parentheses. You could be a little more elegant and rearrange it and work backwards, but I'm not going to do that. So we have this, and we can drop the parentheses. There's no ambiguity because multiplication of real numbers is associative. Now let's work out the other side. So the other side, uh, also, let me say also, let me switch colors. This time it's going to be uh, A, 0, 
zero b times, and then here we have c zero zero d, and then e zero zero f. Okay, so now we work out this product here on the right first. So this is a zero zero b, and this here you just multiply the entries, right? So c e zero zero and then d f. Going kind of fast, you do it one more time, and you get a times c e. If you want to be picky, zero zero b times d f. Again, if you want to be picky. And then again, uh, same reason here, because the multiplication of real numbers is associative, you can drop the parentheses, right? The notation is non-ambiguous, so you have 0 BDF. So the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, so this is equal to this, right? Because they're both the same thing. And so star is associative, so thus star is associative. And really, you'll notice that associativity of star follows because associativity of real numbers. So um, that's key. That's key. All right, two more conditions. We're already past 11 minutes. Sorry. Um, but it's good to go through it. So it's good to, you know, hopefully someone out there is watching this. And you have a, an example where every step is carefully shown. Again, feel free to fast forward. The next condition is the existence of inverses, right? So, uh, sorry, identity. We have to show that there exists an identity element. So remember, it, the condition says there exists E in G such that for all X in G, X E equals X and E X equals X. So you first have to show uh, existence of the identity element. So our identity element is just going to be the identity element we know from uh, regular um, you know, matrix work. So uh, regular matrix multiplication. So this element here is a diagonal matrix, and this is an S, and that's because 1 is not equal to 0, right? Remember, uh, S is the set of all elements A, 0, 0, B, where A and B are not equal to 0. So this element is certainly an S. And the claim is that this is the identity. So we have to show that for every element X and G, x e is equal to x and e x is equal to e. So take any matrix, so take any element, so take any element. So a, 0, 0, b, and s. This is like our x. Then we just have to show that when we multiply our element by our proposed identity, we get back our element on both sides. So a, 0, 0, b, times 1, 0, 0, 1. And we know that this is a times 1 using our multiplication trick, 0, 0 times 0, which is 0, b times 1. And 1 is the identity in the set of real numbers, right? So in terms of multiplication, this is a 0, 0, b. So that checks. Going the other way, we should get exactly the same thing, right? We have 1, 0, 0, 1, a 0, 0, b. And this is equal to 1 times a, going really fast, 0, 0, 1 times b running out of time. And this is equal to a 0 0 b. So this shows that uh, our little matrix is indeed the identity elements identity element. So this shows um, 1 0 0 1 is our identity element. Okay. So notice how we first had to specify that it was an s and then you do the condition because the, the as existential quantifier comes first. The very last step is to show the existence of inverses, so inverses. And then we're done. We've shown this set is a group. So inverses, so given any element, here's the criteria. So for all x and g, we have to show there exists a y in g such that uh, x times y is equal to e and y times x is equal to e. Later on, if you study more group theory, you'll, sh you'll learn that if you have a one-sided inverse, you have a two-sided inverse, as long as you have all the other conditions as well. All right, so we have to take any x and g. So we'll start by taking a matrix. So take any a, 0, 0, b, and s. So then a is not equal to 0, and b is not equal to 0. So note, now we have to show the existence of y. So our inverse matrix is going to be 1 over a, 0, 0, 1 over b. How did I know that? 
Um, I just know stuff from algebra, from linear algebra, right? So if you have a diagonal matrix, um, the inverse is going to look like this. Uh, and note that this is an S, so we have to show uh, there exists a Y in G. G is S right here, right? And this is because um, 1 over A is not 0, and 1 over B is not 0. And this is since A and B are not 0. Right, so these, these guys are all good because A and B are not 0. So this is an element of S. So we took an X and G. We showed the existence of Y. Now we have to verify that this is indeed the inverse. So we have to take the multiplication uh, on the left and on the right. So let's do it. So then A, 0, 0, B. Time. And the structure is important, right? It's really key to do everything in the correct order. Um, you have to do this first, then you have to do this, and then you do this, right? It's, it's a proof. Uh, it's beautiful. So it's A times 1 over A, 0, and then 0 times 0 is 0, and then uh, B times 1 over B. And that's equal to our identity element. And then we do it the other way, 1A. And it's, it's obvious, but sometimes, uh, well, not sometimes, when you're proving things, um, again, when you're first learning, nothing is obvious, especially when you're proving something like this. Um, 1 times a, 1 over a times a, 0, 0, uh, 1 over b times b. And so this is 1, 0, 0, 1. So this shows uh, that we have an inverse. So thus, 1a. 0, 0, 1, B is the inverse. Uh, I mean, you're supposed to say is an inverse, right? Uh, you can prove the inverse is unique later, but let's, let's be a little bit abusive. Uh, is uh, the inverse of zero A, 0, 0, B. Yeah, I mean, we haven't necessarily proved uh, that inverses are unique yet uh, if we're just starting the theory of groups, but inverses are unique, so you can say the inverse instead of a inverse. Um, that's it. So thus, thus S star is a group. Wow, 17 minutes. Um, I believe I have another video showing another set is a group. It's a little bit harder, actually a lot harder than this one. Um, I'm not sure why this one took so long, um, but that's it. I hope this has been helpful to someone out there in the world.